Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. Ate for banning my daughter's older boyfriend from our home. My husband, 46M and I, 48F, have a 20-year-old daughter, Ellie, who is currently on vacation from college. About five months ago, Ellie told us she had a new boyfriend, Tom. This came as a surprise because Ellie hadn't mentioned seeing anyone or that she was dating. But both my husband and I were supportive and happy for her. However, Ellie was strangely secretive about the whole situation. Usually she's an open book, especially with me, and would always share details of her personal life. But this time, she wouldn't show any pictures, and we knew next to nothing about Tom, other than that they met at a party through a mutual friend. Ellie has spent the past month of her vacation in her college town, and the plan was for her to come back this weekend. She asked if she could bring Tom with her for a few days of the trip, as they were getting serious, and she wanted him to meet us. Although we mentioned that we knew barely anything about him, Ellie expressed that it would be a surprise, and that we'd love him. Given he's clearly an important part of our daughter's life, we agreed and said we'd look forward to spending the weekend together. Yesterday morning, we went to pick up Ellie and Tom from the airport to drive them to our place, and we were shocked. We knew instantly that Tom was much older than Ellie and definitely wasn't a college student. I was in a state of surprise, but didn't want to cause a scene, and told my husband to do the same. We drove home, but it was a frosty journey, which Ellie commented on. When we arrived, my husband point-blank asked Tom how old he was. Tom said he was 44. I was immediately disgusted. He's only two years younger than my husband and old enough to be Ellie's father. My husband continued to interrogate him, asking how they met and the whole background. Ellie explained that it was at a party and Tom was there because he's well-known around the town, and they realized they had a lot in common and hit it off from there. I really didn't want to hear any more, and my husband told Tom to leave. Ellie shouted, saying how unfair this was, and we hadn't even given Tom a chance, and that he made her happy. Tom could sense the tension, so he left, and Ellie followed behind him. I texted Ellie to tell her we'd love to see her, and to come over to discuss the situation. She asked if Tom was welcome, and I said he wasn't. Therefore, after labeling me a judgmental asshole, she told me she wasn't coming, and that they would be staying at a local hotel and catching up with friends. I felt terrible about the whole situation, and didn't want to lose my daughter over it. My husband isn't budging, and says he'd have to be held back if he ever saw that man again. Am I the asshole for saying he isn't welcome, or have I done the right thing? Update I was incredibly down throughout most of Sunday, so I spoke to my husband and said that I really wanted to see Ellie. However, I knew that wouldn't be possible without also seeing Tom, so I mentioned to my husband about meeting Ellie and Tom at a neutral location for brunch today. My husband didn't feel in the right frame of mind at this stage, so we agreed that I would go alone. I was anxious throughout the drive, but when I met Ellie, those nerves subsided relatively quickly. I was just happy to see her and that she was well. I still felt a bit uncomfortable around Tom, but I thought this was the opportunity to find out more about him and his intentions. We sat down and I tried to find out as much information about Tom as possible. When I asked him to elaborate on being known around a college town and being at the same party as Ellie, Tom said he used to go to the same college when he was Ellie's age, loved the place, and decided to never leave. He still frequented the main bars and places that college students do, which meant he remained in the community in some form. I found it quite an unsettling response, but remained polite. In terms of other details, I learned Tom has never been married, nor does he have any children. He works as a software engineer and enjoys cooking and meditation in his spare time. Something felt off about him, but maybe I already had my preconceptions. Ellie spoke more about what a good match they were and how much in common they had. When I asked her to elaborate, she spoke about how they both love the same spots around town and campus, with apparently the same love of sushi, and she's never met someone so mature and understanding. Tom also said that Ellie was perfect for him, and he was serious. I probed if he'd had many other relationships with younger women. Ellie didn't enjoy this question, but Tom said that he generally didn't do relationships, it's something about Ellie had drawn him in. After about two hours, we ended the brunch. Ellie said how nice it had been and she was so happy I had shown an interest in Tom before asking whether they could both come to dinner some evening. I told her that would be nice, but I would have to speak to her dad. Tom shook my hand and that was that. My husband remains reluctant, but I feel it's the right thing to do if we want to maintain a relationship with Ellie. I didn't like Tom off first impressions and this hasn't done much to convince me. Something is just off there, and some of his answers solidified my thoughts about him not being right for Ellie. I suppose I'll have to remain open-minded but appreciate any thoughts. 
Further update. After I came home from brunch, I spoke to my husband about the possibility of Tom and Ellie joining us for dinner one evening. My husband was completely against it, but I told him that if we still wanted to exercise some degree of control over the situation before we pushed Ellie away entirely, this was something we had to agree to. It took a lot of convincing, but my husband agreed, and we invited Tom and Ellie to come round the Saturday just gone. Before then, I ended up talking to my oldest daughter and Ellie's sister, Holly, 23, about the situation. Holly was shocked, and Ellie had told her nothing. Holly decided to do some social media digging but struggled because Tom didn't have much of an online presence. She says she was coming to dinner on Saturday, although I was reluctant because it seemed like it would spiral, I eventually said yes. So we get to dinner on Saturday, and Holly just continually grills Tom. It was far, far worse than I did. She asked him if younger girls were his type, why someone his age is still hanging around at college parties, and other small remarks. Ellie told her multiple times to leave her alone, and I tried to act as a mediator. My husband was just silently seething, and I could tell how uncomfortable he felt in Tom's presence. Eventually, Tom and Ellie said they had some big news to share. Ellie announced that she and Tom were planning to move in together for the upcoming college year. I almost spat my drink out, Ellie had planned to live with other friends, and when I questioned this, Tom answered that he realized that he probably won't have another long-term relationship, Ellie makes him so happy, and he doesn't want to waste any time with who I want to be my wife and the future mother of my children. At this point my husband lost it and told Tom to get out of his house. Tom stood up affronted, and Ellie started crying. I couldn't remember the last time my husband had shouted like that, and I think it surprised Ellie. Holly said it was deserved and that she needed to get away from the pedo freak. It all ended with Ellie leaving in tears with Tom, my husband going upstairs, and I was just inconsolable. I've reached out to Ellie since but she hasn't responded. I don't want her to move in with Tom, it seems he's trying to derail her whole life. She's 20, and does not need to be married and have kids, especially with someone his age. She's never had a relationship before, and she appears infatuated to the extent she's not going to listen. My husband has told me that if Ellie marries Tom, that is it, and he wouldn't want a relationship with her going forward. I can't agree with that and will always love Ellie, but it doesn't mean that the whole situation hasn't made me incredibly sad. I would appreciate any advice. Story 2. Itia for telling someone, you should have thought about that before you procreated. My ex and I have a 13-year-old daughter named Nicole. Nicole has several medical conditions that need a lot of attention. She will need some sort of in-home assistance for the rest of her life. While we have an aide to help a couple of days a week, it is still a challenge. The outcome of Nicole's condition became clear when she was two. At that point, my ex and I agreed we wouldn't have more kids because it wouldn't be fair to anyone. There'd be no way we could focus attention on two kids. Someone would lose out in the situation. We divorced when Nicole was five. We originally had 50-50 custody. Three years later, my ex remarried. His new wife, Callie, is nice. My ex did say that she didn't understand the severity of Nicole's condition. I figured there was a learning curve. Eventually, Callie basically said she wanted to be hands-off. Which I respected, though I wondered how it'd work considering Nicole lives with them half the time. Last year, my ex and Callie had a baby. I was a little surprised given my ex was always firm on not having more kids, but figured it wasn't any of my business. He did begin to complain that it was a lot of work juggling Nicole and the baby. I sympathized but really didn't know what else to say. Recently, the venting got worse. He said Callie yelled at him for taking Nicole to her physical therapy appointment instead of helping her with the baby. He brought up potentially having Nicole stay with me more. I wasn't entirely shocked, but it pissed me off. I said Nicole was his daughter. He can't just abandon that responsibility. He asked what he was supposed to do about the baby. I said, maybe you should have thought of that before you procreated, I mean, really, we discussed this ten years ago, as to why it'd be hard to juggle two kids, why did you think having another would be a good idea? He got quiet, and said Callie wanted a baby. I said that isn't enough of a reason, and maybe he should have thought harder before bringing more life into this world. The conversation ended with me saying I'd call my lawyer, and we could arrange for him to have less custody as I'd rather my daughter be properly cared for than be viewed as a burden. Callie called me that night very upset that I had made my ex cry, and that I said her baby shouldn't exist. I said that's not what I said completely, more that they didn't think it through. She called me a jerk. So, Aite, 